I don't really have any appreciable amount of carbohydrates until the evening. So I'm typically in a state of fatty acid oxidation or, you know, mild ketosis most of the day. And, you know, unless you're like a two a day hard charging athlete, there's no need for like two big carbohydrate boluses during the day, unless you got to maximize glycogen restoration after an early day hard workout. And with that strategy, I avoid a lot of uh, glycemic variability like a lot of glucose fluctuations during the day. I find I have more stable energy levels and cognitive levels because our dinner time is usually like a big family dinner or a social time or going out to a restaurant with friends or whatever. I want to be able to, for the more social meal, actually indulge a little bit. I save all my carbohydrates for the end of the day. Yeah, and the release of serotonin in response to the carbohydrate feeding, which enhances your melatonin release at night. So you sleep better too. So I just think as long as you pay attention to the rules, this whole idea of carb backloading is actually a, a pretty good strategy. Ben Greenfield in the building. How are you, man? Hey, good. Not not in the building. I'm actually outside in some farm road back behind my house. But but uh, yeah, I I can only stay in a building for so long. The sun's sun's out today. Got a nice cool cool wind whipping up over the plains. So I apologize if it sounds occasionally like I'm in a hurricane. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, well we'll call it a building. God's God's giant building outside. That is where you are, man. Uh, so you're getting a little bit of walking in, keeping yourself moving in these times. Uh, you know, I walk a lot every day, anyways. Any excuse I can get to walk, I just love to love to move and get some sunshine. And yeah, you know, I spend a lot of time these days, you know, doing consults and and calls sometimes indoors or you know, doing a lot of writing. And so if I can get outside, I'll do it. I like it, man. We are not using the C word today. The C word is not being included in this podcast. We are Thank talking God. about we are talking about some evergreen stuff. Your new book, Boundless, might actually be useful if people are in lockdown because it is one of the heaviest books I've ever felt in my life. So it would double up, double up as a weight, or is it? Yeah, throw throw some uh, throw some blood flow restriction bands on and start to do some overhead presses with that bad boy. Well, you could use it as a step to reach high objects if you needed as well. You know. Um, So today, I want to go through three main areas. I want to talk about your morning routine. I want to talk about your setup for working. And I want to talk about your sleep and your nighttime routine. So starting off, what does your current morning routine look like? I want the full Monty. The full Monty. All right. Well, interrupt me if I tend to rabbit hole too much. But I uh, I usually um, wake up without an alarm unless I got to catch a flight or something like that. I just find I naturally tend to wake sometime around like it's usually like five forty five six fifteen somewhere in there, and I just find that that uh you know waking naturally I'm not opposed to some of these devices you know like i I sleep on one of these chili pad things that keeps your body cool while you're asleep, which is great for enhancing your deep sleep and there's apparently a function on it where you can activate it to circulate more warm water to gradually wake you. I don't use that function. I'm nervous. I might just pee my pants when the <laughs> warm water turns on. Um, and then uh, I have one of those sunrise alarm clocks for when I do got to set the alarm on. That just kind of gradually bleeds sun into your room. So you wake a lot more slowly, which I think is just wonderful for not, you know, ripping you out of a deep sleep cycle if you happen to be one in one uh, in, the, in the morning. And uh, so, yeah, I, I wake. I... Uh, roll over and I do some gratitude journaling for the first few minutes of the day. I uh, write down one thing I'm grateful for. I write down uh, one person who I can help that day, whether it's like, you know, calling my mom or, or, uh, you know, helping the neighbor uh, move something or, or even just like, you know, giving a bottle of wine to somebody who I know might need a a smile that day. And, uh, you know, I I just really like that others facing type of mentality to start the day because I figure if I you know, if I'm writing down one person I can help each day, that's 365, you know, good things I might do during the course of a year. So I do that. And then I, uh, I write down, uh, also any, any insights that I had from my, my dream cycles earlier in the night, or, you know, any just little encouraging words to myself that I, that I want to act on during the day. And then, uh, when I get out of bed, I'm, I'm kind of into, into the, the Ayurvedic, uh, concepts in terms of the morning routine. So I do a quick tongue scrape, which takes just a few seconds with a little copper tongue scraper. What's the logic the back, behind that? Back of the tongue to the front of the tongue just helps to cl- to clean out some bacteria in the mouth that accumulates during a night of sleep. And then I also do uh, uh, oil pulling. So I use uh, coconut oil blended with some essential oils like 
clove and peppermint and uh, swish that around in the mouth while I'm tuning around during the day, you know, taking a pee and getting things ready for the day. And that's also a really, really great uh, oral hygiene tactic, again, borrowed from Ayurvedic medicine. And um, so I, I then uh, go downstairs into the kitchen. And if, if I've woken pretty early or if I have been traveling a lot, and I'm trying to kind of like reset my circadian rhythm to whatever time zone that I happen to be in. I'll usually wear those uh, blue light blocking glasses that people wear at night. I'll wear those in the morning because I find that that reddish orange lens kind of does a good job simulating sunrise. Mm. So if I'm flipping on lights in the kitchen or glancing at my phone or opening the computer or anything, it's a little bit more of a gentle way to wake up. Kind of that same concept of not waking with an alarm clock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, wearing these blue light blocking glasses in the morning kind of gives you that really kind of sunrise-esque feel in the morning because my lazy ass is not going to be out of bed <laughs> when the sun's rising. So, what's the, so uh, kinda... what, what's the brand of sunrise glasses you use? I use the ones made by uh, Raw Optics. I, you know, the the, uh, the owner of that company, Matt Maruka, he's a friend of mine. He's just he's so steeped in light research, and he's constantly retooling the lenses to block out specific wavelengths of light. Uh, and you know, a lot of these blue light blocking companies, they know how to make a quick buck. You know, they'll import cheap lenses from you know uh, India or China or whatever, and then mark up the price and sell on Amazon. And he's actually doing a really good job with his lens technology. And uh, so I, I use the Raw Optics uh, brand. There's a few of the good ones out there. I think, uh, um, what's the company? I've, I'm blanking on their name. Blue Blue Blockers, I think. Okay. They do a pretty good job. And there's a there's a couple others out there. But I use the Raw. Uh, True Dark. True Dark is another one that does a good job. Um, so I use these, these Raw red lenses. And usually I'll take them off uh, typically after I've been up for about 20, 30 minutes or so. So again, I'm just kind of easing, easing from a light standpoint, my body into the day. And then um, uh, once I've spat out that coconut oil, I kind of rinse my mouth out because you don't want to swallow it because it's just like it's accumulating any bacteria and stuff in your mouth. So it's, it's, it's just like cleaning. You want to spit it out. So I split that out in the trash can so that I don't clog the toilets with oil. I, I learned that <laughs> lesson the hard way. You don't want to spit it in a toilet or a sink. It clogs the plumbing. So you actually spit your oil into a trash can, rinse out your mouth. Then I have a big glass mason jar full of goodies. So I, I make myself a big glass mason jar uh, with some hydrogen tablets in it because hydrogen, there's a lot of good research from the Molecular Hydrogen Foundation on the on hydrogen for its anti-inflammatory and selective antioxidant properties. And um, uh, you know I'm, I'm convinced by the research enough uh, to, to do a, a big glass mason jar of that at, at both the beginning and the end of the day. But at the beginning of the day, I put minerals into that. So typically like a pinch of a really good salt, like uh, Celtic salt. Or another one I've been using of late are these uh, these um, minerals that are harvested from these algal blooms. And uh, it's, it's got like 80 plus minerals in it. It's called Quinton, uh, Q-U-I-N-T-O-N. It's uh, like, a, like a hypertonic plasma. So I, I put some of that in the water along with the hydrogen. And then I do a two to one ratio of vitamin C and baking soda. There's a really great book that delves into all the science of vitamin C and baking soda called um, Forbidden Healing. And I, I, was, I was so convinced after reading that book about some of the effects on everything from, uh, from a, a mild change in pH to an increase in, in some immune factor compounds to just, just the overall physiological effect of both vitamin C and baking soda that I just have right there in the pantry bulk ascorbic acid mm -hmm. and uh and then just arm and hammer baking soda which is naturally aluminum free and so i got baking soda i got vitamin c i got hydrogen water i got minerals all in this big glass mason jar of water yeah and i i just suck that down that's kind of my like tonic and um sometimes we'll throw a little apple cider vinegar in there as well because that has a really nice insulin sensitizing effect at the beginning of the day and lends even more alkalinity to the drink mm -hmm. so so i have that and then I, uh, I put on the, uh, a pot of hot water where I start the coffee. And I'll go back and forth. Some mornings I do coffee. And then just because I don't want the, uh, my adenosine receptors to, to get too, uh, too um, insensitive yeah, to the too activity down -regulated. of adenosine, which, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which makes me sleepy later on in the day, I don't do coffee every day because I don't, wanna, I don't want to, uh, to, to create a scenario in which I'm insensitive to adenosine later on in the day and, and can't fall asleep. Because even if, even if you metabolize caffeine really well, if you're a fast coffee oxidizer, and even if you, you're not having a cup of coffee after noon, 
just frequent regular use of coffee without breaks builds up so much of these adenosine receptors. It just gets harder and harder as months go on to fall asleep at night. Yeah. So, uh, so what I do is I'll either do coffee or the other one that I'll do is, is cacao tea, which is lower in caffeine or lower in caffeine, but it has like theobromine and some dopamine precursors in it. It has this real good kind of pick me up, feel good effect. Nice. Some people like yerba mate for that, but yerba mate makes me a little jittery. So I like the way cacao makes me feel instead. So I, I'll typically blend that with chaga, which is which is wonderful. It's 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 chock full of melanin. Chaga is, which can actually interact with sunlight to uh, to kick off electrons and produce some free ATP. So any photons of light will interact with things like melanin. Uh, chlorophyll would be another example. Mm-hmm. Uh, methylene blue, which is marketed now as a nootropic, that's another example. But because I, I'll, I'll tell you in a second, I go down to the office and I do some red light therapy. Mm-hmm. I like I like getting a little melanin or chlorophyll or methylene blue in my system before I go do the red light therapy and blending this chaga with some cacao uh, or doing the, the coffee. But the chaga with the cacao is really great if you're doing like red light therapy in the morning. Just primes then, you for uh, that. Primes you for that red light, right? Just before we move on, the um, yeah, you, you, you you basically produce an extra ATP. You were talking about uh, ways to assure that your adenosine receptors don't get downregulated by spacing your coffee use. What have you found to be an optimal way to pulse that every other day, three times a week, twice a week? What? Well, in the book, I talk about how one tactic for people who just want to drink coffee every morning, you just do coffee for three weeks and then switch to a really switch to a good decaf, like Swiss water process decaf or CO2 extraction decaf for about a week. It takes around six to eight days to reset those adenosine receptors. But if I'm just kind of doing it naturally, I just listen to my body. Basically, if I wake up and I don't feel a need for a little extra caffeine, I just don't have coffee. I do the chaga. So it typically comes out to about Oh, two or three mornings of the week is the chaga and the cacao, and the other mornings it's just a good cup of organic coffee. Got you. Just just organic black coffee. I don't do any calories just because I don't want to take myself out of a fasted state in the morning. So no no MCT oil or butter or anything like that, just just black coffee. And then um, uh, while, the, while the hot water is going for the cacao tea or the chaga or the coffee's brewing, I spend 10 to 15 minutes just doing body work, like foam rolling. Um, uh, sometimes it's like the little vibrating balls, sometimes lacrosse balls. But I just I take 10, 15 minutes every morning to do deep tissue work. So whether or not I get a massage, I try to get a massage once a week. But even if I don't, you know, I figure by the end of the week I'm getting a good 75 to 90 minutes of really good deep tissue work. Uh and I just find it primes my body for the day. A lot of times I combine it with some breath work, uh, a little bit of inversion. So I'll, I'll hang from an inversion table or from some from, from uh, like some gravity boots. But it's kind of like my non-negotiable me time for like 15 minutes in the morning. I'll usually listen to like a sermon or a really good spiritual podcast while I'm doing that just to start off my day on a really positive note. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. Uh, and then once I've done all that, I'll, I'll grab the coffee or the tea. And I'll head down to my office, and I'll generally spend about a half hour uh, going through uh, typically like research articles, science, uh, some of the feeds that I follow, and in, in, uh, you know like like health, exercise science, nutrition science, um, you know some some different Twitter feeds, some research journals. I just really like to learn at the beginning of the day. I find my body just soaks up and feels really primed to learn. So I'm I'm typically not doing emails or or, uh, you know, social media and stuff at that time, I just kind of soak up some knowledge at the beginning of the day while I'm having my coffee or my tea. And while I'm doing that, I use red light therapy. So I've got these big, uh, these juve red light panels in my office that I flip on. So as I'm standing there going through all the research, I'm just bathed in red light. I take off all my clothes and I just do like naked red light therapy, full body. (laughs) And, uh, and that's for like 20 to 30 minutes. It's amazing. You get nitric oxide release. It, it stimulates uh, the mitochondrial production of ATP. It's just this this complete feel good effect. It, it's and, and it's also very similar to uh, to sunrise again. So I'm getting that big red light dose in the morning, which is great for circadian rhythm. And um, you know, I I like my office to be just like this total zen den. So you know, I've got essential oils kind of getting diffused into the air. I got the red light therapy. I've got a little grounding mat that I stand on, so it's as though I were outside, kind of sucking up some negative ions from the surface of the earth. Same thing if I'm standing on that in my office. I get the 
the same effect. So, so that's just kind of my me time in the morning. And I finish up all that and you'll, you'll find if you guys, uh, use that tactic of baking soda, uh, with that glass Mason jar after about 45 minutes, that baking soda kicks in and you just go have this awesome, awesome dump. So <laughs> I, uh, I flip off the red lights after about a half hour and you know, I just, I can tell right away. You feel the stomach gurgling a little bit. It's like, all right, it's ready time. to go and, uh, go upstairs and just have, have an amazing, amazing, amazing bowel movement. And then, um, you know, by then it's, it's typically around, you know, like uh seven 45 to eight 15 ish in the morning. And I, I usually, before I jump into the rest of the day, um, you know, and, and kind of start work and everything or have some breakfast. I like to do some kind of like a morning, um, some kind of morning protocol that makes me feel really good. I don't like to hit the weights hard or do like a big high intensity interval training session in the morning. So usually for me, it's either a, about a 20 or 30 minute walk in the sunshine or a 20 or 30 minute sauna session. So this would be after I go to the bathroom, Yep, yep. you know, I'll, I'll do like a, a sauna plus a cold soak, you know, 20 or 30 minutes in the sauna, just the deep sweat. Um, again, I'll, I'll put essential oils in the sauna. Um, sometimes I'll put on like a topical rub, like any of these topical muscle creams that have things like, you know, cayenne and menthol and black pepper. Cause they're just sweat buckets. I found if you, if you smear some stuff over your skin yeah, before you, you get into the sauna, uh, I'm using one called uh, prototype eight by uh, ATP science right now. And I'll just like smear it on my arms and my legs, you know, put some, some really good uplifting essential oils in there, like rosemary or cinnamon or something that's really kind of like stimulating to the brain to get me all charged up for the work day and, uh, do the sauna. So I'm sweating really hard. Then go, then I'll go jump in the cold pool or take a cold shower for about three or four minutes. And, uh, I'm either doing that or just like a long walk in the sunshine. And so do all that. And then, um, uh, you know, I, I own a, a company called Keon and we always have a call every morning at nine 45. So I got to be done showered, you know, ready for the day, you know, spend a little time with the kids and say good morning to them and hear about how they're going to spend their day. They're homeschooled. So they're at home with me all day anyways. So I just kind of check in with them, make sure they're all set for the day and check in with my wife, make sure she's all set for the day. And then I just make myself a, a giant superfood smoothie while I'm getting ready for that call with my team. And that, you know, the smoothie just changes every day, but typically it's things like, you know, for, for my base, I just use ice and then I'll put some stevia in there, or some monk fruit in there for a sweetener. Mm -hmm. And then I just love to toss a bunch of bunch of great stuff in there. So for my liquid, I'll usually use bone broth or or kefir or sometimes coconut milk. I I make my own yogurt at home, uh, usually using coconut milk or goat's milk as a base. So I'll put some yogurt in there. Uh, and then typically a few scoops of something like a greens. I'll put some collagen in there. Uh, squeeze of a lemon or some kind of vitamin C in there. And then I, I just blend all that up. If I want a little bit more creaminess, I'll put like half an avocado in there. Sometimes for a little bit of extra greens, you know, I, I grow sprouts at home. So I'll put some sprouts in there and then I'll, I'll top it with just a bunch of goodies like spirulina, like after I've blended it, I'll top it with like spirulina, coconut flakes, cacao nibs. But I, I blend the smoothie really thick. So I basically like eat it out of a bowl, almost like an acai bowl <laughs> yeah, yeah, with yeah. all these, like these a superfoods. Oh yeah, it's amazing. It's so good. It's like the highlight of my day. I'm thinking about that one, doing my sauna or my walk. I'm already thinking about that amazing, amazing superfood bowl I'm going to make at home. And so I typically, I'll eat that while I'm on the call with my team, just chatting with my team, you know, hearing about what everybody's going to be up to for the day and um, just touching base with, with the whole squad because I'm running my company virtually for the most part because our offices are in Boulder, but I'm up in uh, Washington state mm -hmm. and they're down, you know, most of my team is, is down kind of around Colorado. So I, um, I, uh, do that call. And then after that, from about 10 until around two or two thirty, I just, you know, no push notifications, no, no Twitter, no Facebook, no social media. I just work like a horse with blinders on for the next four or five hours, you know, kind of that deep work concept you know, like Cal Newport's book mm -hmm. where I'm just, you know, whether I'm, I'm writing or working on a book or a series of articles or shooting videos, doing content, um, doing consults with my clients or people who have hired me to go over their nutrition or their workout plans with them or their, you know, their lab work, their blood work. Uh, sometimes 
you know, I, I advise a lot of companies in the health and, and fitness space. So sometimes it's advisory calls for different businesses. Um, you know, every, every day kind of varies, but you, but for me, that kind of like 10 to two or two thirty slot is just deep work time. Just crush the day during that time. I'm hyper productive. And uh, I take breaks about every, uh, you know, it depends on, on the style of work that I'm doing, but every 30 to 60 minutes, I'll take breaks and, you know, do some pull-ups, do some kettlebell swings, um, you know, jump up and down on a trampoline. I, I just like to take little breaks just to keep my body moving, uh, during those, those, you know, four or five hours of work. But, uh, you know, generally once I've, once I've finished all that work, I, um, I come up and, uh, I, again, I have a home office, so I'll make myself some lunch. Lunch for me is just usually, you know, some good greens, like some more sprouts or really nice plate of greens with, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the whole smash diet, like sardines, mackerel, anchovy, herring, or salmon. So usually I'll do like some kind of really good omega-3 rich cold water fish, you know, some nuts, uh, some avocado, uh, usually another cup of bone broth. And I just have, they're kind of like breakfast. I have like a superfood kind of salad type of thing for lunch but made uh, up with fish in it the super yeah, yeah, <laughs> super food fish, fish yeah. or nuts sometimes if we've had steak or chicken or whatever the night before i'll use that as the protein topper but again i i don't i don't really have any appreciable amount of carbohydrates until the evening i save all my carbs until the evening so i'm typically in a state of fatty acid oxidation or you know mild ketosis most of the day and, you know, unless you're a, you're a, like a two a day hard charging athlete, there's no need for like two big carbohydrate boluses during the day, unless you got to maximize glycogen restoration after an early day hard workout. So I find, because I typically do my hard workout in like the later afternoon or early evening, as long as I've had carbohydrates the night before, my glycogen levels are pretty topped off anyways. And with that strategy, I avoid a lot of uh, glycemic variability like a lot of glucose fluctuations during the day. I find I have more stable energy levels and cognitive levels. Um, and it also allows me to, because our dinner time is usually like a big family dinner or a social time or going out to a restaurant with friends or whatever. Like I want to, I want to be able to, for the more social meal, actually, you know, indulge a little bit, like have some red wine or some dark chocolate or some sourdough bread or some sweet potato fries or whatever. So I save all my carbohydrates for the end of the day, which is also nice because since I typically am not doing my, my hard workout like weights or high intensity interval training or anything like that until the later afternoon or the early evening, that means that I'm very insulin sensitive after that workout. So those carbohydrates very easily get partitioned into, you know, muscle tissue, and liver them, tissue. Shuttling them all into the right muscles, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they don't yeah. spend a lot of time in the bloodstream with my blood sugar spike. So it's just, it's a, it's a good scenario for me, you know, doing the easy workout in the morning or the easy movement in the morning, no carbs all day, and then the hard workout later on in the day, then the carbs at night. So I like um, um, for the people that are listening, I've been a big fan of carb backloading for a long time. And backloading carbs, for me, one of the main reasons that I like it is that it plays with the sacrifice reward mentality that you have, yeah. you know, you're like, right, I, I, it might be nice to feel satiated with some slightly more starchy food earlier in the day. But as you, I, I can get through, I can get till two o'clock, right? Well, I'll get my workout in. Now it's four o'clock. Oh, well, I've only got to wait until five, five thirty. And then you've got your nice big starchy meal. You feel nice and full. And obviously you've got this change in insulin sensitivity. You've got the improved shuttling and partitioning of nutrients into the muscles. It seems like a real, a real kind of uh, easy hack. Yeah, and the release of serotonin in response to the carbohydrate feeding, which enhances your melatonin release at night. So you sleep better too. So I just think, I think especially for an active person or someone who's working out later on in the day and someone who's willing not to like stuff their face with random snacks and sugar earlier in the day, as long as you pay attention to the rules, um, you, you know, this, this whole idea of carb backloading is actually a, a pretty, pretty good, good strategy. So, um, anyways, though, I finished lunch and I'm a huge fan of napping, huge fan of napping. So I take a nap almost every day for like 20 to 45 minutes. And, um, I, I kind of protect that time quite a bit. I tell my team, like, don't schedule me any calls from about like two 30 till four. I just want that time to, to kind of like have that breather in the middle of the day. And so for, for me, you know, typically, uh, after lunch or with my bone broth at lunch, 
um, I'll have something that's kind of relaxing. Like right now I like reishi mushroom extract kind of relaxes me, tones me down in the middle of the day. And I just slip away either, uh, and, and take a nap uh, in the bedroom or I have one of these of late. What I've been using for my naps is I have a, uh, a soft shell hyperbaric chamber, mm. which just concentrates oxygen. So I go in there, I'm under concentrated oxygen, flip on the oxygen mask and, um, I'll put on some really relaxing beats. I like, uh, the one I've been using of late is this, uh, this vagal nerve stimulator, an app called new calm. And, uh, that thing will just, they, they say based on the research, it'll simulate a full 90 minute sleep cycle in 20 minutes. Wow. I don't know if that's true, but, but I can literally just turn that thing on for 20 minutes and be dead to the world and feel amazing. And sometimes I'll cycle through it two times. So I'm mm. getting a full 40 minutes and that's my go-to. The other one that I like is brain FM. That's another really good app for just kind of checking away. So I put on some good noise blocking headphones a good sleep mask. Uh, I like the sleep mask called Mindfold. It just blocks out all light. And I go dead to the world from like, you know, 2.30 to 3.15 or so. And that nap just, like I have a better workout later on in the day. I'm, I'm more present for evening activities. I just like, I'm a huge, huge fan of naps. So I find, uh, I find sometimes with naps that I can, f- I can suffer with a little bit of mood change afterward. I wonder if you've ever come up against that. Yeah, typically I'll take a stimulant after my nap. Okay, like, bring I'll, you back I'll, around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it'll be a touch of coffee. Uh, sometimes I'll pop like some nicotine gum. Um, sometimes I'll use a nootropic. Like I like one called Qualia Mind. Um, some, something that kind of like picks me up again at, in the afternoon. So maybe that's maybe so, that's where I'm going wrong. Uh, I mean, it's I think my ability to go from hyped to chill to hyped again just my ability to change that speed to decelerate yeah. and then recelerate is is pretty tough i mean you know if yeah. you're if you're having a conversation with a client and you're getting real hyped up they're having a great day you're having a great day you're going backward and forward is that mushroom extract that you mentioned sufficient to kind of bring you down in brain fm a couple of yeah. binaural beats is that enough to kind yeah. of take the, ch- the the sting out of what you've been doing yeah that combined with the food in your stomach from lunch i find just it, it works fine and then um, the, the other thing is that, you know, if, if you take a nap and you, you're putting some kind of stimulant into your system around 3.15, I typically don't go to bed till like 10 anyways, and I don't find that that interferes with sleep. The only thing I'm careful with is if it's, if it's coffee, I'm a little bit careful with that. So if it's coffee, it's like four ounces of coffee, right? It's like a microdose of caffeine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but that's enough to just give me a little bit of a pick-me-up and kind of get me going again after the afternoon nap. And then... Um, just to yeah, just to wh- circle back to your work schedule at the moment, can you just tell me about your desk setup that you're using at the moment? Oh yeah, so like I mentioned, I have I have one of those grounding mats uh, so that I'm I'm getting a little bit of the mild anti-inflammatory effect that you can get from the the negative ions uh, from the ground, and then I've got a, a standing desk, and, and I just have a hand crank desk. I think mine's made by a company called Rebel Desk. Uh, Veradesk does, does really good desks too. And then I've got uh, a treadmill that I can walk on sometimes. Is that true falls. Form? Yeah, I have the true form treadmill just because I wanted a manual treadmill that could keep up with my, I've got really long legs and I also walk pretty fast. And I find that a lot of these manual treadmills for offices, they're like too slow and too short. So I like that true form because it, you know, doubles as a workout tool anyway. So we're going to get buy a treadmill. Might as well get one you can you know throw down some sprints and stuff yeah, for on sure, too. For sure, for sure. Plus, it, the curved nature of the treadmill engages your glutes a little bit more. Man, running, so, doing sprints on that thing is miserable. The hamstring, uh, glute, yeah. lower, just the whole posterior chain gets yeah. fried. Yeah, it's impossible to, to run without engaging your posterior chain on that thing. And it's actually hard to walk without engaging your posterior <laughs> chain as well. Yeah, yeah. So, see, so I got the true form, standing desk, grounding mat. The red lights I mentioned, but I'm only using those in the morning. There's mm-hmm. actually some evidence that you can you can overdo it. Like you can create excess reactive oxygen species if you overdo the red light therapy. So I just do that in the morning. You said about 30 then, minutes, um, is that right? Uh, no, closer to like 20. Okay. Even if I'm in the office, you know, sipping the coffee, doing the research stuff for 30 minutes, I only leave the red lights on for like 20 minutes. Um, and then uh, what else is in my office? I said there's, a, there's like an essential oil diffuser in there. Mm-hmm. If I want to kind of be in a different position than just standing or walking, I've got a, uh, I've got a chair called a saddle chair, which kind of is it by like Fully? Pel- 
I've got one by Sally, S A L L I. Yep. Got and you. then I've also got a, a stool that's also in a pelvic shaped position. Mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. one's made by Focal Upright. It's called a Mogo. So there's no chair in my office at all. It's either the, the pelvis stool or the saddle chair. Have you tried, the, ha, when, when standing, have you tried a small step to rest one foot on in front while you're standing? Yeah, I use the treadmill for that, actually. <laughs> I got the side of the treadmill right there. Yeah, I get you. And, uh, that's, um, yeah. that's been such a game changer for me. For anyone who's listening that uses a standing desk, buying like a kid's step, you know, like what a kid would use to get up to the kitchen counter or yeah. anything that raises your foot, maybe between half a foot to a foot and a half off the floor. And it really does decompress my back. That's made a big difference. Also, I wondered, have you tried the rocker boards? Uh, I have one called a fluid stance. Yeah, yeah. That, that's like a, it's like a balance tool, but it's not that hard to balance on. So yeah. I could be like on a phone call. Yeah, I'm a and big not fan. Feel like I'm I'm not able to balance. Big fan. The other one that you can put your foot up on works well. This is a new one I have called. It's called a slack block, and it's basically like a slack line. It was developed for balance training. So I have it in my office as one of those things I could stand on for a little bit during like a Pomodoro break. Yeah, yeah. But it can double as something you can put your foot up on too. And that's just, cool. So that's like yeah. a mobile miniature slack line. Yeah, exactly. But it that is a so sick. Yeah, so you get a little bit more increased proprioception. The other thing I have related to the feet is I always have a couple of golf balls, like right underneath my feet. So mm -hmm. I'm always doing some foot rolling while I'm standing at my desk. So just some some deep tissue therapy for the feet. And that works pretty well. I've found as well, and, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the same for you, but sometimes when I'm doing some work that doesn't involve my hands, having something to just get rid of the excess energy. So I always have a pen in my fingers and I twirl a pen. I tend to do that under the desk when I'm podcasting and I actually find my ability to focus on what I'm doing when I have a, a small amount of really basic movement going on elsewhere makes a big difference. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of that by rolling the golf balls under my feet, but that's a good idea with the pen. Or you could use, I suppose you could use like a captain's or crush hand grip trainer mm, or something well, like that too. So it came, the, the idea came from seeing kids who have ADD um, oh, yeah. and they're given Play-Doh uh -huh. to, to just play with, with the hands while they're in uh, classes. So the kids, oh, yeah. ha the kids have this Play-Doh and what it allows them to do is just expel the top end, that, that excess energy that they've got they do something with their hands and it allows them to focus better and I, I just I've had pens in my hands through you know all of university all of school put a pen back in my hand and I found that my focus improved unbelievable that's a that's a great idea I like that yeah pen I suppose a rubber band or like some play-doh yeah it's a it's a great idea I like that cool so um um yeah so the, let me think if there's anything else in the office that's interesting I I use um if I'm working in there at night, same thing up in the master bedroom, the master bathroom. Like I'm not a fan of LED lighting because even like these newer, like so-called biological LEDs, they all produce like a like an imperceptible flicker that's a little bit irritating to the retina. And there's even some evidence that it may cause a little bit of damage to the rods and cones. And so um, I use incandescent lighting. Incandescent light bulbs simulate pretty closely the natural spectrum that you get from the sunlight. Mm -hmm. And so all the cans in the house have incandescent light, but then I've got a, like a, um, a lamp in the office for nighttime work that's a red incandescent light bulb. And then up in the bedroom and the master bathroom and my kids' bedrooms, it's all red incandescent lighting. So it kind of looks like a nightclub a little bit <laughs> when, you, when you flip on the lights and yeah, go to yeah, the bedrooms yeah. at night. But there's no blue light. It's amazing. So, so you don't disrupt your circadian rhythm when you're getting ready for bed at night or you, you know, you flip on the lights, go take a pee at night or whatever. Mm. It just keeps things, you know, really stable from a circadian rhythm standpoint. Is there but a particular, the day, is there a particular brand of bulb or lamp no, that you've got just, with that? Just, you just slot in. I just grab, grab whatever's on Amazon. It's just all red incandescent light. They're right. a little, they're, they're a little bit more power hungry than led lighting, but it's, you know, yeah, it's worth it to me the extra, whatever, you know, 20, 30 bucks a month for my electrical bill to, to go with incandescent. So got you. Um, so yeah, I use incandescent lighting and then red incandescent lighting at night. And, um, yeah, those are some of the biggies in the office. As far as what I have, there's always, I got a kettlebell on the floor of the office, you know, always. So I got to step over. It's always top of mind. So whenever I'm in there, you know, I'm always thinking, ah, I got to throw down some, some kettlebell swings, you know, a little pull up bar in the door of the office. I can hang from every once in a while when I'm walking in and out. 
you know, I got a little rule. I got to do five pull ups. You know, Every so time you go through the there. door. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's such yeah. a good hack. I've got, uh, I'm currently opening up my shoulders to do some mobility for weightlifting and I've just got so many resistance bands on the floor. It's like, yeah. if I don't pick them up to use them, I'm going to fall over them and hurt myself. So I might as well, it's the same as you with your kettlebells. It's like, oh God, I got to step over it. I might as well use it. Yeah. Yeah. My office is just littered with shit like that. <laughs> just kind of, kind of keep me moving, moving during the day. Yeah. And, um, then I've got, you know, I pay a lot of attention to not having a lot of non-native EMF, like Wi-Fi devices, Bluetooth devices, you know, uh, so everything's hardwired with ethernet cable. So I just have like cat seven metal shielded ethernet cable instead of the Wi-Fi. So I'm just plugged directly into the router and the Wi-Fi is off. And then I've got these, uh, cause I had a building biologist come to my home and do like a walkthrough of anything that might be producing a lot of dirty electricity or a lot of, a lot of EMF. And mm-hmm. so, um, I put a uh, dirty electricity filters in the office too. So these just plug into the outlets and, and filter any power surges that might be occurring. And, That's um, cool. and then, yeah, so no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth and these dirty electricity filters, and so I, I just feel better when I don't have a lot of signals bouncing around. That's also the advantage of a manual treadmill is a lot of people don't realize like treadmills produce a huge amount of EMF. And so if you can have a manual treadmill instead of a, a motorized treadmill in your office or in your gym, I, I think it's a good idea from a health standpoint. Got you. Um, um, I, want, I wanted to touch actually on Bluetooth. Did I hear right that you don't wear AirPods or any other Bluetooth headphones because of the adverse effects of Bluetooth? I noticed that you're wearing wired Apple headphones at the yeah. moment. Yeah, I'll, I'll either use AirTube or, you know, or, or wire in versus Bluetooth just because of, you know, a few different studies that have looked at a, a, like a dark blood, blood field analysis and shown like some, some clumping of some of the cells in response to these Bluetooth signals. And, and compared to Wi-Fi or, or say like a 4G or 5G signal, it's, it's less of an issue. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm using a phone or, you know, talking on a lot of these devices so much. I just figure, you know, if there's an extra three or four hours a day, I don't have to have some kind of non-native EMF up around my head. I just don't. So, got you. Uh, just so, yeah. you've touched on you've touched on a topic there that I know a lot of people will be interested in. What's your thoughts on five G at the moment? Is there any way that people can protect themselves as five G phones get rolled out? Um, well, you can you can go into your settings and just switch it back to four G if you want. But well, four G four G has issues as well. The, the problem is, you know, and, and Dr. Joe Mercola just wrote a great book called EMF on this. I, I interviewed him about it on my podcast is, you know, the effects on the calcium channels of the cell. You know, you get a, bit, you get a steep calcium influx into the cell, which basically creates a net positive charge inside the cell when it's supposed to be a net negative charge. And then you get some amount of, of uh, DNA unraveling from, from, the, from the radiation, you know, the, the, the non-ionizing radiation. And then um, you, you also get... A little bit of effect in terms of down regulation of what's called your NF kappa B pathway, which is responsible for modulating a lot of your inflammatory processes. So you know, the the problem is that when with 5G, not a ton of studies have been done on either its deleterious impact or the absence thereof. So it's one of those deals where, well, if no studies have actually been done showing its effects on the human body, but we're rolling it out, you know, I'd, I'd rather wait until we see the studies. So I'm. I'm pretty careful with it. As far as what you can do to protect yourself, obviously with 5G panels being put up everywhere and, you know, the fact we can't escape it, I would say the best thing you can do is to counteract some of that calcium influx into the cell. Just make sure you're supplementing with magnesium, you know, or or, you you can eat organic produce that's grown in really mineral rich soil to get your magnesium, but it's tough to, to get good organic produce grown in mineral rich soil these days. And I think magnesium is a good supplement in the evening anyways for nighttime relaxation. So I just take magnesium every night, you know, keep your red blood cell magnesium levels topped off. That'll help with the calcium influx. And then for the, um, for the DNA piece, the, the two things that, that can really help to repair the DNA are any sirtuins, you know, like resveratrol or, or, you know, blueberry powder or taro still bean or cacao, you know, any of the things you might be working into, you know, like that superfood smoothie or whatever in the, in the morning anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really, really works well hand in hand with any NAD precursor, you know, like NMN or NR or even like NAD, you know, the occasional NAD IV, you know, like once a month just to keep your NAD levels topped off. NAD and sirtuins work hand in hand to help protect the DNA. And so that's, that's number two is do magnesium, make sure you keep your sirtuins and your NAD levels topped off. And then the third, regarding that inflammatory pathway, the NF-kappa-B pathway, 
uh, the best way to, to kind of modulate that and keep it active would be a mild ketosis, which we're getting from that kind of carb backloading type of approach. And then also, um, exogenous ketones actually can, can really help with that pathway. So like, you know, using ketone esters or ketone salts, especially if you're traveling, you know, airplanes, airports, hotel rooms, places where you can't turn the Wi-Fi off or, you know, you're getting exposed to a whole bunch of other signals that might go beyond, you know, your phone which, on which you might have the Wi-Fi disabled or on which you might have in airplane mode. You can't control other people. So when I travel, I, I really step up my, uh, you know, my, my supplementation with these ketones and kind of keep my, my ketone bodies even more elevated to assist with that inflammatory pathway. So that's another good hack. I, but I like those are it. a few things those are a few things you do to protect yourself would be magnesium and um and then uh sirtuins, NAD precursors and uh and ketones. So I like it. I like it. Does uh Keon yeah. do a ketone essay? Uh no we don't. We don't. But there's some good ones out there like HVMN has some good ones. Uh the company Ketone Aid, they've got some good ones. However, you know I Ketones are so interesting because for me, they give me almost a, a buzz very similar to what I get from alcohol, probably because of the uh, something called 1,3-butane diol in, uh, in some of these ketone esters. And when I'm like making cocktails at night, a lot of times I'll just, you know, when I normally use gin or vodka or whatever else, you know, that I mix it with ice or lemon juice or bitters, I'll just use a little bit of ketones instead. <laughs> and it's, it's just, I actually just, just today, literally today at bengreenfieldfitness.com, I published an article on like, how to make amazing cocktails that don't have alcohol in them, but that still kind of spin some dials in your brain and have this feel good effect. And, and actually ketones are one, one way you can do that. So that's you funny. Can use them, you can use them as an alcohol substitute. I run, uh, um, I run, I run nightclubs. I wonder if I could sell some ketone cocktails. Uh, if I could throw some of those up, I wonder how many people, uh, you, you want to, you want to be careful. And I should say this too. If you, if you mix ketone esters with alcohol, um, the byproduct is kind of similar to GHB, and you know, that's, that's a little date rape <laughs> drug. So you wouldn't want somebody like ordering a mocktail and then also getting a cocktail and winding up just like face down in their plate. So that would be so, yeah. a bad look. That would be a bad look. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we're on to we are on to the nighttime routine. Tell us about your nighttime routine. What's it looking like at the moment? Yeah. So, um, like I mentioned, it, you know, I, uh, I take that nap and then after my nap, I do a lot of my reactive work, like emails, social media you know, people needing to hop on last minute phone calls with me, all that shit that that's kind of like not necessarily that doesn't fall into the productive bucket, but it's kind of more reactive. Yep. Like I save all of that for later on in the day, you know, cause I'd rather strike while the iron is hot when I have low amounts of decision making fatigue or cognitive fatigue early in the day and do a lot of my productive work. So I wake up from my nap and typically, you know, there's another hour and a half or two of just, you know, kind of putting out fires, so to speak. Right taking care of all the shit that would normally distract you earlier in the day. And then once I finish all that, uh, I'll typically jump into a workout, you know? And for me, I, I just finished my, my Russian kettlebell RKC cert. So for me, for the past few months, it's been, you know, snatches, Turkish get-ups, goblet squats, you know, usually a lot of concurrent strength endurance training. So I'm mixing that up with like, you know, air dine, um, sprints, uh, rowing machine, just, just, you know, a, a lot of, uh, kind of circuit style work with the kettlebells. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, typically it's something like that. Uh, since I just finished that cert up last week, I'm kind of getting back into just basic weightlifting, right? Push, pull, hinge, etc. So, um, so either weight training or high intensity interval training, uh, in the, in the afternoon or the early evening, typically I'm working out from about, yeah, kind of like that. 5.30 to 6.30-ish range, right around in there. I remember a little while ago you mentioned that you'd pivoted from performance to longevity, so probably about a year and a half ago, I think. What's Where's your goals at now? Uh, definitely longevity, you know, because for years I was competing in Ironman triathlon and, you know, racing for Reebok and Spartan training, and, and uh, now um, I just want to feel good. You know, I want to be strong, maintain muscle. I... You know, still, if anybody joins with me in a workout, you know, they tell me I'm a, a pure masochist, but, <laughs> you know, even my workouts now are nowhere near, you know, going out and crushing, you know, two hours out in the mountains, you know, and, and, you know, or five hours on the bike, like, you don't have to do any of that shit anymore. I'm working out like 
40 to 60 minutes max Got right you. your condition and, based um, on based on your instagram at the moment your condition looks to be even leaner than you were looks to be the leanest i think i've seen you um i'm about 185 pounds around four or five percent body fat it's quite lean and, ben that's quite lean yeah <laughs> but i'm naturally lean like my dad's the same way my dad doesn't really even do much training and he's probably you know he's 60 something he's probably like nine percent body fat so a lot of that's genetics good you know, genetics I don't, I don't really go out of my way to to like stay super lean but you know my testosterone's fine my thyroid's fine you know so as long as my endocrine system is is working fine i'm, I'm okay with just maintaining where my body wants to be at got you, got you. you know because i i def, you know i'm a foodie i eat a lot of food i punish a lot of ribeye steaks and lard and ghee and liver and you know i just my body doesn't hold on to a lot of fat honestly it's just it's the way it goes so Anyways, though, so, um, after, after that, uh, that kind of like early evening ish workout that finishes up sometime around six 30 or so, uh, typically after that, I'll make sure there's no more email fires to put out, no work that's left to be done. And then from about seven, seven thirty on, it's all family time. Like we have these wonderful, like family dinners where we play board games and go over our gratitude journals and sing songs and, um, and, and just, just connect as a family. We all typically are gathering together and making the meal together and everybody's contributing and cooking and laughing and playing music. And so from like seven 30 until nine, it's just like full on family time, dinner time. We finish dinner and then we go play more music. I'll read to the kids or, or play them some songs on the guitar. Um, you know, we, do, we, we don't really go out to restaurants that much, but typically it's just like super duper focused and relaxed and fun family time um, all, the, all the way up until after nine. And then typically by about 930 or so, you know, the kids are tucked away. And then my wind down routine um, in addition to those red lights would be, you know, as we're making that family dinner and, you know, getting back into dinner, I've typically got, you know, the blue light blocking glasses on again to start to, you know, suppress any exposure to, um, to, you know, uh, large amounts of, of blue light. Um, I, uh, what else do I do? How long are you aiming at- for with the, with the blue light blocking glasses? 90 minutes, two hours before bed? Yeah, it's usually about 90 minutes, two hours before bed, unless I'm planning, like, you know, whatever, if my wife and I want to have like, you know, like a, you know, a, a really intensive sex session or, or, or something, you know, we're planning on being up till 10 30 or 11, you know, talking, having sex, stuff like that. Like sometimes I'll just like purposefully not do a lot to wind myself down. <laughs> so I don't want to <laughs> be tired. Um, I get you. But, uh, but yeah, I also, um, I tend to have a pretty raging appetite even after dinner. So I'll typically do something with glycine, uh, or gelatin in it, which really just, so I make jello. I make jello with just like some, um, some gelatin that I'll mix with coconut milk and a little stevia. Sometimes I'll put a prebiotic fiber in there, which also helps with sleep, uh, like acacia fiber. And then I'll just put that in a food dehydrator for about a day and, you know, stir that up, keep that in the fridge. And I'll just give myself a nice kind of like, um, you know, like, like, uh, a uh, two inch by two inch uh, piece of jello mm. at night. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of almond butter on that, a little touch of sea salt. And uh, that's like, that's my go to dessert for keeping my appetite satiated. Satiated. Je- gel- yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's because that gelatin, the glycine just helps me go to, go to bed and not feel hungry later on. So I'll have that typically for dessert after dinner. And, um, and then uh, for the wind down routine, other than that, um, what else do I do? Uh, I'm my my go-to supplements for sleep are CBD. I do about typically high dose CBD. Most of the research on CBD that shows that it enhances sleep uses a lot more than than what they use for like the anxiolytic effect. Usually, mm-hmm. it's anywhere from 100 to 600 milligrams for sleep. So typically, I'll take about 100 milligrams of CBD. Sublingual. Um, yep. Yep. I, I like the droppers. I, I find I respond best to that. I just hold it in the mouth for a couple of minutes. And then, like I mentioned, the, the little bit of glycine with gelatin. And then also, like I mentioned, magnesium. So CBD, magnesium, and then a little bit of that jello. That's, that's kind of like my go-to snack. What's your, and, uh, what's your magnesium supplement? I'm using right now Mag SRT by Jigsaw Health. 
It's uh, I think it's glycinate, three and eight, and citrate. I think. Got you. What's the um, dosage? Uh, it's about four hundred. Got you. Yeah. So you just go to go to bowel tolerance, and man, when you when you mix that with having the vitamin C and the baking soda in the morning, it's great for the bowels as well. And um, then the the uh, red light, and then what I sleep on is I have a gravity blanket. You know, I'm big. I'm a big fan of in addition to making sure you sleep in a cold environment and you're paying attention to light and you're paying attention to uh, not having a lot of ambient noise in the bedroom. I think safety is big, so I don't work in bed. I never have my laptop in bed. I don't even keep business books or health and fitness books or anything like that up in the bedroom. It's all just like fiction or something not related to work. And then I also find when I pull like one of these big breathable 25 pound gravity blankets over myself for sleep, it kind of amplifies that feeling of safety even more. So it just, it's, it's super duper relaxing for me. So I sleep with a gravity blanket on top and one of those chili pad devices underneath because the chili pad will circulate about 55 degree cold water under my body while I'm sleeping, which really enhances your sleep cycles quite a bit. And then um, I've got an essential oil diffuser and kind of like in my office, I'll diffuse uplifting scents like, you know, peppermint, rosemary, et cetera. In the bedroom, it's usually like lavender or bergamot or some really relaxing scent that I'll diffuse uh, while I'm asleep. And then same thing, I'll put on a sleep, sleep blocking mask, uh, some foam earplugs. I have an app called Sleepstream on my phone, and there's a lot of research showing that, uh, you know, there's all these different noises that can block out sound like white noise or brown noise. Uh, mm-hmm. It turns out that, p- that pink noise is the one that enhances your sleep the most. So I put some pink noise on that. And then um, let me think if there's anything else. How are you doing that with yeah, the earplugs in? Well, I got the foam earplugs in, but then the the um, the phone's in airplane mode next to the bed with the sleep stream app on, just playing pink noise. Just out of your phone so, speaker? Yeah, yeah, because we have you know we have like roosters and owls and all sorts of stuff out here <laughs> in the forest, and so I just like to cover up that that ambient noise. And um, then. I use uh, breath work to just kind of lull myself to sleep, typically four count in, seven count hold, eight count out. And I'll do that for about five or 10 minutes. And I'll just, you know, doze off at that point, just kind of breathing myself to sleep. Definitely one of the things that I like about your day and the way that it's constructed is that everything has its place, that you're not half into anything apart from perhaps doing little bits of extra training while you work, but the focus there is in facilitating work, not in doing work while you train, right? I particularly like the idea of the family time, the focused family time. I know that Ben Bergeron from Chasing Excellence, big fan of this. I know Joe Rogan, big fan of this as well. You know, spending time with your family where it's not half looking at your kids, half looking at your phone, half thinking about work still, there's the emails to do, there's this, that, and the other. I like the idea that you've got your sections in the day that focus you toward what you're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, multitasking, you know, in the sense of like rolling golf balls under your feet or flipping a pen while you're working is just fine. But multitasking as far as not being focused and mindful on the task at hand is just, it's a huge issue these days. And so, yeah, I, I agree full on. Unbelievable. Look, Ben, man, it's been absolutely fantastic. Your new book, Boundless, linked in the show notes below. Where else should people go to uh, to check out what you do? Um, you know, my podcast, all the articles I put out, you know, all that jazz, it's just all at bengreenfieldfitness.com. And then my uh, my supplements company is uh, Keon, K-I-O-N, and that's at getkeon.com. Unbelievable. Everything will be linked in the show notes below. It's been mind blowing today. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to go back and listen to this. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Go and check out Ben's podcast. If you enjoyed what we went through today, then he does deep dives on there all the time. Ben, man, thank you so much for your time. It's been awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for having me on.